Alright, so I haven't been doing very much these past few days, just walking around uh, another city, getting familiar with it every so often. Um, but I've also been spending a lot of time on the internet too. It's just, it's just uh, so easy to to relax and just watch things on the internet, and read things. I've been in getting interested in this uh, Game of Thrones. People just keep referring back to it over and over on Nine Gags, so I decided to check it out a little more. And really, there, there's just there's a lot of uh, good stuff. I mean, I read the a little bit of the book, the first book, I believe, four, three, maybe three years ago. I read the little bit of the the, the first book about three years ago, uh, at, in Rice Lake, Wisconsin. On the they had it on the ebook, and it was interesting. Uh, it was maybe the first twenty pages, and they were talking about dire wolves and. I think winter is coming or something. I think they might have been bringing that in uh, at that that early moment. It was it was kind of interesting, but it just it seemed a little like too much fantasy for me, um, and not enough realism. Uh, but when I when I've been watching the highlights on on YouTube of various things, particularly what what really got my interest is uh, the death scenes, people killing each other. It's like I'm not. I'm like, I was kind of expecting uh, long, boring speeches, but some of them ended up in people dying. And I was like, wow, this, is, this isn't this is too bad. Um, what No, what really got me interested was there was some guy who made a chart of all the deaths that of significant uh, characters in, in the show. And I started looking up these characters and finding their death scenes on YouTube. And then I got interested because, I mean, I don't mind spoiling the <clears throat> the story uh, too much. I, I just I want just want to get to the points. Not none of this, this these long speeches, these long drawn out scenes for me. I'll just take the death scenes. Let's just get to that. And I was able to do that uh, with the help of this chart that I have in my WordPress that ta that shows how uh, a lot of these guys got killed and and then uh, somebody put together a uh, like 10 minutes video of several of these significant characters dying and that was like one of the best things to watch that I enjoyed uh, but then I started asking you know okay what what's led up to all these deaths anyway you know why why are these people getting killed so I, st I started watching a little bit more here and there uh, just trying to piece together the story, not so much interested in watching it from beginning to end. I couldn't, I, I'm not willing to pay a dime anyway for anything, but uh, I'm interested in, in a little bit. I mean, a lot of people will, what, they'll, they'll splurge or something on a weekend and watch it on Netflix from beginning to end. I'm not too interested in that. The only thing I've ever done with this, anything like that are watching Survivor or watching The Apprentice with Donald Trump, the reality stuff, the stuff that's, that was so different to me and and really based on reality that I, I just couldn't help myself but but really get thrown into it. But it's strange, I've, I've never really, well I have thrown myself into fiction, there has been some good stuff like the like reading the Godfather book or pass, or the Northwest Passage book, I mean there are there is some darn good fiction that really you could confuse with reality and there are a lot of aspects with this game of thrones that just I it's like it really feels like it could be a, a somewhat of a conversation i mean i've listened to some of the characters talk out of character all right, it's like in interviews with Conan O'Brien, and they do definitely sound a lot different than their characters. Maybe it's just I really do like the fantasy of it all. I mean, a lot of the things are are so creative in their thought patterns, like baby dragons. Like, 
I never really thought of baby dragons, and, and they're talking about how they have to wait until the dragons grow up before they can actually make good, be good dragons. That's that was interesting to me. It's similar to Twilight's, where the vampires chose to eat elk instead of people to help uh, subside their cravings. Uh, interesting story twists, at least.